cross-country trip we got home on Friday we had the rig and the truck washed down and detailed on Saturday and today we'll be putting her back in storage until the end of January when we have our next trip planned but man does she clean up nice got those chrome running boards installed on our trip Donna gave them to me as a Christmas present and uh, so anyway, the rig, the uh, truck performed great on the way home. Probably the worst thing that happened for the rig was we lost that fender over that dual wheel cover right there. You can see it missing, part of it's intact, part of it's gone. We use this mobile car wash guy, his name is Vern. And his, the name of his company is Vern, the amazing car wash guy. That's actually his name. And I gotta tell you, he just, he does a really good job. He hit the tires with some tire black and polished up those wheels quite nicely. And coming around here, polished down the uh, generator box for us. So, yeah, we had a great trip. You'll be seeing more about that, but I just, I had to show you just how good of a job Vern does on our equipment. Now we'll go park this today. It'll probably stay parked for about two weeks, the fifth wheel, and then we'll be back on the road again. So yeah, good job, Vern. Thank you, man. Vern is located here in Las Vegas. If you need or want his contact information, let me know in the comments and I will get those to you. He just does a remarkable job and his pricing is very affordable. So anyway, no paid endorsement here, just like Vern, just like the job he does. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome to season two. Welcome to 2021. And goodbye, 2020. Boom. So we're happy to see that in our rearview mirror. Oh yeah, we are. And I'm sure everybody else is too. I gotta tell you, we uh, we you're gonna see more about this later. We just got back from a about a two week trip in our hometown of Kansas City, and we got to visit our kids, all four of them, our two boys and their significant others. And uh, what a great trip! It's the first two weeks cross-country trip we've taken in the rig and um for for leisure we've moved cross-country yeah but i'm talking about in the current rig it's yeah. the first long haul we've gone on in the rig yeah and uh it was a great trip we had very minor issues you'll see some of that uh, but nothing major mechanical no flats no nothing like that so we were we were very happy and very fortunate cosmetic decor stuff Things that we've mentioned before that were frustrated with the quality of the build of the RV, this particular one. Um, but we'll share more of that with you guys as, uh, as things go along. Okay, as you're gonna experience in this video, like many of our videos, you're gonna hear the pitter patter of our dogs circling the table as we do our video. And that's just, that's just part of life. They're part of our life and they're part of your life. So anyway, our trip was absolutely uh, great. We had a great time. And we wanted to talk to you a little bit today, just a, before we get rolling into season two and our videos of things we're up to and things we're doing, we just wanted to take a moment and first of all, as always, thank you for supporting us and watching us and being part of our community. Um, got a great question today about our second video that we ever did during season one uh, having to do with the uh, generator box and um, and it's it's always great that somebody was trying to find out who installed our box we talk about it on the video i think there was a name change of the company between when we did the video and and when this person watched the video so we were able to help them and tell them 
uh, the new name and they were able hopefully to find the place. So that's what this, that. that's what this community is all about is we just kind of help each other and we will respond to your comments. Uh, and if you have questions, we will answer your questions um, because that's, that's part of what we enjoy about our hobby is just this interaction and helping other people helping with this people, process, giving advice. Yes. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, why should you guys have to learn the hard way what we've already figured out? <laughs> not, if we can help you. Not that we have figured it out well, but well, yeah. Uh, so we're going to be showing you in, in upcoming uh, videos in season uh, two. Um, and it's not planned out because we're not that organized yet. We are not full time. So uh, again, we look at this as a hobby. But some of the things that we know that are going to happen soon, uh, you're going to see uh, some uh, content surrounding our trip across country. It's not going to be extremely detailed because we got real caught up in spending time with our yeah. with our kids and not so caught up in videoing everything we were doing. And that's not our normal routine. Normally, we we like to try to shoot a lot of stuff for you to to see, but there is some, and uh, we had a blast with them, and and so we got a little bit of that. You're going to see us installing a. Um, our satellite dish. We have a, a dish that is meant to be portable, but it can be mounted, and we're gonna show you how we how we mount that. We lost the fender skirt off of, not the whole skirt, we lost actually the fender cap off that goes over our, our wheels. You're gonna see us install that. We're gonna show you how to install puck lights, which are those inset LED lights. Um, and we found out something very interesting about those lights. You don't replace the LED panel inside of the light fixture itself. I suppose you can. I think I saw something on YouTube where somebody did. But you actually replace the entire fixture. It was crazy. Every light in the place started blinking. The refrigerator they lights went out. Yeah, they uh, strobe. The closet pole broke. <laughs> We're going to show you a little bit. We won't show you the how we repaired it. We will show you the repair job and explain what we did to it. So there's some interesting fix-it topics coming up that you might might want to see yeah it was just you know when a closet pole breaks and we had two weeks worth of clothes in there so you got to take everything off the pole and it's everywhere and then you gotta put everything back on and it was just a whole process and it was very tiring watching her do all that <laughs> we didn't film everything we should have we didn't <laughs> but but we did uh we did come up with a plan to repair it and we got that off of youtube and yeah. We, we followed the plan and it worked very well. Um, I'll be interested to show you my new chainsaw that, that I got as one of my Christmas presents. Um, and in this video, you will see uh, we, we had our truck detailed by a local uh, mobile car wash guy and he did such an excellent job on it. So we're going to talk about that a well, little bit. And your favorite Christmas present of the whole year. I got my favorite Christmas present of the whole year was I got new chrome running boards for uh, the Beast and uh, my brother and my son and a friend and my brother's son-in-law we installed those while I was I got them in Kansas City she she had them delivered there and um, and when I say she I mean Donna my wife uh, and <laughs> so we kind of rallied uh, the troops and um, installed it. When I say we installed it, I really mean they installed them and they did a really good job of it. And um, so you'll see some of that. You'll see that as part of the... Uh, we'll, we'll try to link uh, where we got the running boards from in the... In the, in the comment section. Here. <laughs> yeah, down there. And uh, here's the interesting part about, about the running boards is I've been, I've been telling her... And when I say her, I mean Donna. I've been telling her ever since we got the truck that I wanted chrome running boards. The running boards on there were uh, factory running boards and they were flat black and they actually looked and worked great for what they were. They're very utilitarian though. And they kind of went with the fender flares that are on it, which are also a matte black. But I wanted chrome and the reason I wanted chrome and uh, you'll see it in the, in the video in a moment is uh, the truck itself has chrome rails going down the side of the bed, the flat bed. And I just thought that there was a cool tie-in with the bed and the truck body if it had the chrome running boards. And He loves his truck. I do. And to tell you though, what's really cool, and it's probably because we've been married 40 years, 40 plus, um, 
she got exactly the running boards I would have gotten if I would have been the guy looking for them. And I had looked and looked for running boards and I couldn't find them and, and I don't want to cause anybody to get um, disgusted, but I couldn't find them with enough chrome. <laughs> so uh, that's why I hadn't done it already. And I kept looking and they always had these thin chrome strips or they had the chrome was only on top and not on the side. I wanted it on the side so you could see it, so you could see the tie in. And boom, for Christmas, Donna ended up uh, getting me. I gotta exactly say, it was runningboards.com, and they couldn't have been more wonderful. I chatted with a guy online, and he assured me they were gonna fit his truck, and which his truck isn't like you know, just a normal truck. <laughs> and, uh, and I was really nervous, and they came in like three days. They got there before Christmas. I mean, the whole process was relatively. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, so I would recommend them highly. Yeah. And I think that, that just to add on to that is, you know, you can't beat service, right? And when somebody will work with you and you don't know a lot about, about what you're asking about and they'll talk you through it like they did with Donna. Uh, and even they would have had to do that with me. I don't know that much about buying rain boards or installing them for that matter. But he walked her through it. He reassured her that they would work. And you know what? They work great and they look great and they are exactly, like I said, they're exactly what I would have bought for myself. And super thank you to the guys who helped get that done during Christmas break. It was really nice because I was dreading that we were going to have to come back here and find somebody to install them. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have tackled it alone, although it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty simple, but, but it also, you got to be willing to lay on the ground for a while and, and, um, uh, I know, it was in cold some, back some there. Bolts. <laughs> yeah, but it was worth it, and it was very tiring watching my family members do it for me. I helped a little bit. Okay, so what else this is, is okay? Enough about your truck. Yeah. So we did want to talk a little bit about, as you know, we have moved into an adult-only retirement community-minded place. Yeah, fifty-five plus. Anyway. Uh, part of some of the activities that they have up here, they have an RV club. And so we went to a couple of their meetings and we've, I'm on the planning committee and cause I, you know, I just have to volunteer for everything. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we are going to join them for some trips this year. They have two rules. Um, it has to be within a four hour drive from here. And it has to be no longer than four days, I think is how, how it works. Anyway, um, a lot of their trips are not over the weekend. So we're kind of limited to what we can participate in and what we can't. Yeah, they go midweek a lot, which is great if you're retired. It doesn't work out so well if you're still working a full-time job. But that's okay. It's fun to be a part of something. You know, it's fun to be a, like this channel. It's fun to be a part of that kind of a group because... It's there, and when we can do it, we're going to do it, right? Yeah. So January, we have a trip planned to Cattail Cove, which is close enough in proximity that we're going to go to Quartzsite while we're there. If you guys aren't familiar with uh, the activities at Quartzsite every January, you should look it up. It's normally one of the largest RV shows in the country, and also it's a huge tent with about 100,000 people that show up and a whole bunch of vendors. I don't know what that's going to look like this year. We do know that it will be open and there will be activities going on and uh, we're going to do it as safely as we can. Yeah. And um, yeah, during COVID, um, they do it in, in this giant pavilion and then outside around the pavilion is where they sell RVs. There's an RV show and then inside the pavilion is all of the support stuff that RVers like that you can purchase. Uh, last year, we got our tire minder set up from Quartzsite. Yeah, and our air compressor. And our air compressor, our VR air compressor. Love both of those. Anyway. And we came within two <laughs> centimeters of purchasing an Onan generator. I'm glad in hindsight oh, that yeah. we did not I do that. that. So uh, we ended up, as you, as you saw in one of our early videos, we ended up getting the generator box put in or built and installed and putting our own generators in there. Now, mind you, all of these RVers that come to this area, it's Quartzsite is like this little bitty nothing town, and all of a sudden they are deluged with RVers from, from everywhere, but it's all BLM land. So everybody boondocks pretty much. There's a few campgrounds, but for the most part, 
it's all boondocking. But um, I don't know. It's you know, a community of like-minded people is always a fun uh, presence to be in. So yeah. that's what we enjoy. About so we're it. going. Yeah, we're going with the RV club, and then within the R outside of the R RV club is a bigger circle, which is people interested in RV stuff and RVs because the people going to courtside. So it's kind of like everywhere you go, you're going to, you're going to be around enthusiasts. And I think that, that I'm looking forward to it. I'm very leery because of COVID and uh, we won't have a shot at getting the vaccine by then, which is fine. We will be extremely careful and we already are. And we'll just take it up a notch when we're around that many people. They'll probably limit the number of people that can go in the building at any one time, that sort of thing. Yeah. And a lot of people won't go probably because of COVID. So I think we'll be okay. And you know what? If not, we'll go hang out in our RV. We like to do that anyway. Um, we'll light a fire and, and pretend we're camping because we are. <laughs> we, uh, we'll be going to uh, Balloon Festival in Pahrump. Uh, we have a trip planned into the Grand Canyon, which I'm really looking forward to. And then um, I think sometime in May is uh, Big Bear uh, or Duck Creek, somewhere in that vicinity. So anyway, there's lots of plans coming and we can't wait to have you guys share and come along with us and see what's going on. We showed you a lot of uh, Pahrump last year. We're going to show you a little bit more this year because it's one of our favorite places because we love the campground and, and with its giant pond or lake. Um, and we also like the distance. It's not that far from home. And you can go down there and really enjoy a weekend and feel like you went somewhere, feel like you got away. So we're looking forward to that. And, you know, again, this was such a crazy year and we are, we are so anxious, as I'm, I'm sure you are too, to just put it behind us. And I don't care where you're at on the political spectrum. I don't care where you're at on whether or not you believe in COVID or you don't, but it doesn't matter. It was a weird year for everybody. And uh, regardless of really what your personal beliefs are. So we are so anxious and I, I know you are too. We just want it behind us, um, but we don't want to move too fast. Stay safe until think, you get... Yeah. Uh, I think we've got a little bit more cruising through this to go, but um, I think it will get better. And uh, we just stay positive, everybody, really. And it might be a little sneak peek at like, you know, we might do a little review of some more uh, fifth wheels or pushers or gas D, gas uh, class A's. I don't know. There might be there might be a new RV in our future. I don't know about that. Um, you know, they in every relationship, there's got to be one person who hits the gas and one person who hits the brakes. And usually, <laughs> I'm the one hitting the gas and she's hitting the brakes. <laughs> On this RV issue, it's been kind of dip, the opposite. And I, I will tell you this much whether you really are gonna buy one or not is almost beside the point because sometimes the fun is in just looking. Yeah, right? that's so. true. But you know, I think, I think this trip especially kind of reaffirmed to us that this isn't a full-time living camper. No, but it did, it, it did much like Park City, it did well in the cold overall. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. But it is not, and the floor plan, we still love the floor plan. Donna still loves the kitchen and, and so on and so forth. But one of the things, and I, I talk about it a little bit in a later in the later video uh, when we're talking about our trip. Um, we are absolutely, I am anyway, I, I think you are too. We're amazed at the, at the cheaply built aspect of RVs. And I'm not going to rant on that, but you know, it's all over the social media pages and YouTube about uh, the the cheap and and lack of quality in the craftsmanship. And I've got to tell you, I think for the most part, except for the higher end models, I think for the most part, you can talk about cheap quality with just about every RV out there. And so part of one of the things we're, we're going to do is we're gonna to try to do little segments where we talk about the quality issues here and there throughout the year uh, to kind of point out some of the things you're up against. And here's what I will tell you. You will always have something to repair on your RV. Even if it's a top, it, top dollar RV, there's always something going to break. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they roll down the road. And you probably heard this expression, they are a rolling earthquake. <laughs> the whole time you're on the road, everything in there 
is bouncing and shaking and rattling and, and banging. And that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna show at some point. This Mine, was the worst. Well, this it is... was. We had some of the worst roads and Highway 40 in the, the state of Arizona is the most ridiculous piece of junk road in America. It has to be. We were on the road longer this time than we ever have been, mind you. But nothing, like, I have a coffee pot and I have an ice maker on my uh, on the countertops. They've never moved. This time they were on the floor. <laughs> like, it was yeah, it that was, drastically it was bad. different. And, and I got I to gotta tell you, so when you put, combine that kind of a highway with quality issues, and I say quality very broadly, the craftsmanship may be there, but if you are if you are screwing in a piece of junk to the wall, you might, you might screw it in the best it's ever been screwed in. It's still a piece of junk appliance that you're screwing to the wall. And that was the case with our closet. Is yeah. Well, I, I had two weeks worth of clothes in there. If we wanted full-time living in that closet, you know, that pole was never meant to hold. Yeah, enough negative talk. You'll see it for yourself. I just, it's mostly a buyer beware comment that we're trying to make is just know what you're getting Do into. Do your research. You're not, getting in, you're not getting into a house on wheels. You're getting into a rolling. The salespeople break. aren't going to tell you. They're not no. going to compare the values to you. And within each brand of RVs, there are four or five different levels of quality you can purchase. And you quality need to know tiers. They're what quality you're tiers. going to get when you get it. And we know when we bought ours, our Sprinter um, by Keystone, we know that we were not buying the expensive top of the line yeah. Keystone product. We were buying the entry level fifth wheel for Keystone. We knew that. I just, there's a couple of things that that you would have expected to be built just a little bit better in something you paid that much money for. We'll talk about that more though. We, we're being too negative. What else you got here? Um, just, you know, uh, welcome to season two. We're anxious to have you guys come along with us and we're really excited to get this year going uh, in a more positive direction and just get out there and have fun, you guys. Regardless of the quality, <laughs> get in that thing and go. And whatever you do, Please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next, next week. week.